Hi Sebastian, hi Ellie, hi Bryce, hi Milo. Today I'm going to show you how we make our letter book like when we're at school. And you're going to need a marker, a highlighter, scissors, and a stapler. So when we're at school, this is how I want to show you mommies and daddies that we do this. So you have some specific directions for helping your student complete this at home. You'll see we have five pages here, and the first one is the cover and the back. And then you'll see we have the numbers one and two, whoops, three and four, five and six, and seven and eight. So we have eight pages plus the front cover and the back cover. And what I'm going to do is draw a line. Usually beforehand, I will fold the book in half to make the crease down the middle because there's a little line here but it's not in the middle so I want the line to be in the middle and then I'm gonna do this with one cut although you guys would do one page at a time I'm going to draw a line in the center and then for the student to cut on I'm going to choose a highlighter a thicker highlighter is better I have a thin one but a thicker one is better so I'm going to highlight my line with pink. Pink and yellow and gray are good colors to highlight with. And you can make this line as thick as you want to, which will help support your student when they are attempting to cut. Because cutting on a line is difficult, but cutting on a thicker line gives more success because you can stay in that pink shaded area more easily. Again, you would do this to each page. I'm just going to do it to the first one and cut them all together so that this video doesn't take forever. So I'm going to use my scissors and you will have to probably help. Most of you guys will have help from mommy or daddy holding your hand and putting your thumb in the circle and three or four fingers in the oval. And most of our friends need help with this. So here's my paper. I'm going to stand so you can see me cutting and I have a cutting song. It goes like this open shut them open shut them give a little snap open shut them open shut them give a little snap 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 and sometimes i'll verbally redirect even though i'm holding their hand i'll say something like on the pink line let's stay on the pink line so you can refer to that colored highlighter and then you may be able to help them put them in order. So we've got our front cover. We're doing the letter H book today. And then I need number one. And we'll keep putting them in order. Number two, number three, number four, number five. And this is a good opportunity to practice counting. Number six, and identifying those little digits that are in the bottom corner, seven, eight and then our back cover is going to face the other way so that when we're done we have a front cover and a back cover because those are terms that we want to talk about then with help i will let my friends help with the stapler i usually put it down on the table and then i put my hand on top and then their hand and then they help me to be able to press down that we were doing it safely but they're still getting to help you can staple it once in the corner or you can have your students staple three times for more practice stapling. All right, that's the first part of putting our book together. And then I'll make a second portion to this video to show you what we do with this book after it's made. Okay, now we're gonna talk about what we do with our book after we've made it. Typically we'll do the assembly and reading the book straight through on a Monday toward the beginning of the week. And then each day we will do a little bit of an extension to this activity to sort of milk this activity for everything it's worth because that way we are repeating the activity, we're gaining more from it, and we're really, um, it's, it seems like a very simple activity, but there's so much that can be done with just this one simple book. So I'm gonna kind of show you the extensions that we would do for that. So we would start out by just reading through the book and I would ask simple questions like, what letter is this? H, what does the letter H say? And a lot of times people will say H says huh, but really it just says huh. 
so we make sure we get the correct sound and then we'll talk about the pictures that we see. I might ask, what is this? So that I will get a response that's either one word, hat, or a full sentence, this is a hat. And then I might ask a question, I might change it. I might say, what do you see? So that I can prompt the student to answer differently by saying, I see a hand. And I might ask, what is this? This is a house. Do you live in a house? And the student might answer yes. So I can ask additional questions like, what do you do with a hat? I put it on my head. So again, prompting for more language, uh, for working on using full sentences, we can do so many things with just the front page of this book. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily do all of that right away. That might be on day two or day three that I would start asking more questions depending on where the student is. If your student is able, you might ask those questions from the first use of the activity. And then we'll turn the page. We might talk about the page number. I might ask, what is this? But I just want them to read hat. We might talk about the sounds and what letters make which sounds. We might sound it out. I might cover up the H and talk about the at sound and then reveal the H at says hat. So I'll do that for each page. We have hand. Horse. House. And another thing I might do is I might give the student a highlighter or a marker and ask them to circle capital H or circle lowercase h. Or I might ask them to put an X on capital H or an X over lowercase h. Usually I would ask them to circle, but you can change it up. And then I would ask them to circle the word house. Even though it's the only word on the page, it's still uh, a direction that they're following. They're still identifying the word and they're complying with the command to circle. So there's a lot we can do with each page of this story. And then I will make another short video for the next portion and then I'll be back. And when you get to the next page, instead of just seeing the word, you're gonna see a sentence. So first the pages just identify the object and then the pages provide a sentence. This is a hat. So you can start really reading the sentence and identifying the words on the page. So you can ask your student to circle the word A. You can ask your student to underline the word this. And those are some sometimes com complicated and complex um, commands for your students to follow. So you can work on that, identifying the different words, again, asking questions about a hat. What color is the hat? Where do you put a hat? Uh, what do we do with a hat? And then the next pages, again, just continue to provide a full sentence. And for some of our students, I can use my highlighter to rewrite the sentence at the top and have them trace it with a crayon or a marker. Typically we'll use those thin markers that have um, pencil grips with them where they can put their fingers in. So they can trace that. If they're not at the point of tracing sentences, they can trace the, the letter H for me. So I may do some extension activities with these sentences. And sometimes I'll change it. If for students who are more advanced, I might write, what do you see? And have them trace, what do you see? And then I will write, I see a horse. And they will trace, I see a horse. So that way we're not just reading, this is a horse and getting too familiar with that sentence, but we're changing up the words and providing another way to answer a question. I see a horse. Or what do you do with a horse? I ride a horse. And those are all sentences that your student can write if they are at that level. And the last one, this is a house. So I could ask questions about the student's house or what do you see next to the house? So we're working on positional spatial words. The tree is beside the house. The chimney is on top of the roof. So we're talking about on top, beside, behind, in front, all of those different spatial words that we work on. Uh, and you can ask them to count how many trees. So we could work on circling one, two, three trees. How many trees are there? Three trees. So this very simple activity can turn into a lot of work for a student. Again, we can refer them to the front cover. We can talk about the back cover. We can review the letter sound. 
there's so much we can do with this. And on the blank pages, again, we can we can take the blank pages and have them trace the letter H, write the letter H, write their first name, write their last name, depending on where they are. This can be a very simple activity, or we can make it very uh, much more complex. So those are just some ideas for you to be able to use these letter books that you received earlier in an email. And if you're unable to print them, um, I will email out and see if anyone is unable to print them. You can let me know and I can maybe drop them off so that you have them and are able to use them um, for at home schooling. Okay, and I wanted to show you guys one more thing you can do with your book. Um, if you wanna add some more cutting practice in. You see on these first pages how the word is listed twice. Sometimes I will outline one of the words with a highlighter and I'm gonna make it very thick and then I'll show you. I will outline it with a highlighter and then I will direct the student, either helping them with hand over hand or if they're able to do it on their own, I will direct them to cut out the word. Okay, and so then typically you can leave the book like this with the Base, or I will often just cut I will often just cut and that way we have basically like a little flash card for the word hand um, and they've gotten to practice cutting and then obviously it says house here but once you cut those will be gone um, and you can do that and then you have a word to work with and if you cut out all four words you can place the words on a table and you can ask the student give me hand and they will be able to pick out the word hand from the four words so after I've had my student cut I cut out the word hat the word hand the word horse and the word house, now I have those as basically little flashcards and I can put them on a table. And I'll show you guys. And then I can ask the student, give me house and they can select the correct word. So you can use these as a sight word activity to select the correct word. You can use them to review the sounding out of these words. And that's just one more way that you can use your letter book while you're working at home this week.